Hey, I'm Marty from Spring Ahead Media Solutions. This video is going to do a bit of a deep dive into all of the different triggers that you can use to set off an automated email in MailChimp. Um, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and sign up for my email list. I have lots of other videos, including a video giving you a broader overview of how to set up an automated email. This one is just about the triggers. So these are all of the reasons why a contact can be added to this automation. And we can add filters after this point. So the most common one is someone signs up for your email list. You can send it when someone receives a tag. Keep in mind that triggers happen when something changes. So if contacts already have the tag, they will not start this journey. They will only start when they receive the tag, when they go from not having it to having it. We'll head over here to contact activity. This includes if they are added to or removed from a group. Audience field changes is one that we often use when a MailChimp account is connected through an integration to another platform. So for this one, if you had a field that was like the status of your customers, and so the field is status and they will change from a lead to a client, then when that field changes to client, then they would start this automation. If you're using MailChimp's SMS texting platform, you can have an automation that triggers when they text you back a specific keyword. Next, we have dates and special events. This one is most often used for birthdays. Sending birthday emails is so popular. It's automatically giving me the option of sending people an email a year after they sign up for my email list, which I don't find that helpful. Um, specific date is not that you choose a date, it's that there's a field in their audience profile of a certain date, and this will send an email based on that date. So this could be that they have a membership that expires on a certain date, and so you're gonna send them an email 10 days before that date. But the date that they're referencing is in their audience field, so like each contact has their own specific date. Okay. Next up is shopping activity. This is when you are integrated with your e-commerce selling platform. So you can send an email 20 days after they buy a product asking them for a review. You can have a specific follow-up email when they buy a certain product. You can remind them to restock their products, abandon cart emails, of course. And then there are some transactional emails in here as well that you can also use. Next up is marketing activity. Now these are ones that need to be set up before you send these emails because again, automations work in the future, but you can set it up that after you send a bulk email, it triggers an automation. Same with if they open that email, they didn't open it, they clicked any link. And listen, this one here clicks a specific link. So again, you'll need to set this up before you send that email. And you're going to say, that people who click this specific link in this specific email get added to this automation. I actually have a whole video specifically on this, so I will link that up there. So now I chose when someone gets added to my email list as my trigger, and I'm going to be more specific about that here, and I'm going to filter that. So now any of these triggers can be filtered. So I'm gonna click on that here. The trigger that I chose is when someone gets added to my email list, but I can be more specific about that. So if I head down to sign up source here, I can choose that they had to come in through Calendly. And now this will be anyone who's brand new who came through the Calendly will get this email series and it will exclude any of the other new people. You also can make this a negative. So it will send to everyone who comes in, but not people who came in in this case through Calendly, but you could do, if you're giving things away on a landing page, you could say anyone who came in, but not people who came in through a landing page because they're getting a freebie already and we don't want them getting the general welcome email. Other ways that you could filter people in here, by tags, by any of the columns in their contact profile, by the date that they were added, by their interaction with certain campaigns, and so on. The new email signups trigger also has one more thing. It has if you want it to send to people that you've imported from a list. This one defaults to not being included. And what I would warn is if you do include that this is going to send anytime you import a list, you just need to be very aware of that because you can easily by accident send things to people who you didn't mean to. Now one more thing before I wrap up the triggers. Now, one more thing before I...
Now, one more thing before I wrap up the triggers here. We have a checkbox for whether people can re-enter this journey. So for a welcome email, we don't want them to be able to get it again ever. But for an abandoned cart email, yes, we would want them to be able to get that email again. And then if we expand this settings here on the left, down here is actually an opportunity to add people manually. So you can copy and paste their emails into there or actually add a whole segment through this. Well, there we go. If you have any questions about triggers for automation, leave them in the comments below. I love answering questions. And if you're ready to build out your automation, I have a whole nother video for you.